BBC Radio Berkshire with the police and every little thing she does is magic. Now, if you've had enough of Shakespeare being set in the Roaring Twenties or with puppets or to rap music, um, South Hill Park has something that'll be right up your traditionalist street. Their next community production is the classic Macbeth, which they promise takes the infamous tragedy back to its roots. With me are lead actors Max Puplet and Laura Hanawin. Uh, nice to meet you both. Hello. Hi. Uh, I don't think I really need to start by asking you why you wanted to play Macbeth or Lady Macbeth, do I? Because they're, they're, they're stonking roles. Yeah. But, yes. uh, but why in a community production? Because you are both fully, fully trained and quite experienced pros. Yeah, so so this one's a, this production is more of a research and development project right. actually for Southfield Park themselves. So this one's led by professionals. So everyone backstage is is professional, and then some of the castmates are obviously professional as well. Mm, uh, yeah. And we all like to get sort of fresh ideas actually from from community roots. Actually, it's quite nice to go back to the to the home base as it were, and and sort of right. fuel that fire again for the passion. So so some of the cast are pros, and some of them are keen amateurs yeah. and everyone else not on stage is a pro is yes right? yeah they yes, do all do yeah. it professionally yeah. okay right now it's, that's very interesting you see so uh, so laura what do amateurs bring to this that you might not get from a pro and i'm, I'm assuming there's a reverse side of the coin and there's certain things they don't have which you have to help them along with a bit would that be right yes i think um obviously once when you when you've trained professionally you come in with a lot of tactics that you can use and techniques and, yes yes but often when you're approaching something especially Shakespeare and you've trained you have a very set way of approaching it or you're taught a very set way of approaching it mm. I think to work with amateurs who I mean I have to say all the amateurs in our production they're very experienced anyway on the stage um yeah. they just bring a uh, Max was saying earlier it's kind of freshness to the the process and how you're looking at things they think oh well actually this is a different way that we could look at this yes. you're you're ta- you're taken away from perhaps the set rigid although this, it's being billed as as a traditional macbeth isn't it back to or is that what they mean when they say back to its roots or have they so so this is maybe yeah, it's not <laughs> it is in a sense in a sense back to its roots yeah so not shakespeare's roots uh we've, we've taken it all the way back to to the real macbeth because macbeth was a real king uh, who reigned for 17 years, I believe. Right. Um, and actually a historically very good king. Um, okay. oh. And who was married to to a Lady Macbeth, who did not convince him to, to kill thousands anyway. of people. No. She's been she's been um, maligned then by, yes. by the great yes. bard. Right. Definitely. By an Englishman. <laughs> yes. Oh dear. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're taking it back to its more historical roots um, with Macbeth. So. Well, when, when was he around then? How long ago are we talking about? 1040 him? AD around that oh. sort of era, so about yeah. 200 right. years after Vikings. Yeah, the 11th century. Okay. How will that make it look different then from um, Macbeth's traditional Macbeth? Because obviously they're back in time quite a long way as well. Yes. Uh, ha. So that we we've there's not much information about that sort of era. So we've we've oh you largely, can make it up then that's good <laughs> yeah and it's, it's quite yeah. nice it's like a it's like a putty that we can mould yeah, to our own yeah, sort yeah. of degrees. Um, but there's a there's a great TV show actually called Vikings uh, that was set made by the History Channel. Mm. So they obviously have a team of historians that that work on trying to find out as much information as they can. Yes. And we've also been in contact with... Uh, Reading University. Reading University, yeah. yeah. And a lot of uh, different historians have given us their input and said on how they imagined that it oh. could have looked like back then and different ceremonial things that we can use. And we've got a fantastic costume designer yeah. who's gone out and done a load of research and come up with these beautiful costumes that are amazing. Right. So just give us a, you know, a slight idea then of what we might see in terms of costume or, or, or all the other things that you just mentioned there that uh, might surprise us? So it's sort of a different take on a kilt, really, because kilts Ooh. weren't actually invented back then. So so <laughs> it's an odd... It's almost like a diagonal kilt a diagonal that, that goes kilt. down... It's very Vivian Westwood, yes. isn't it? So just <laughs> yeah. imagine her coming out with something like that. Yeah, yeah. diagonal um, kilts, right. And we've got... Um, so you're showing a leg, then? Yeah. 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 Just the one? Yeah, just the one, yeah. <laughs> sorry, one. sorry, go on, Laura. No, so. I was going to say, we've got... Um, obviously, we have the witches' characters, and we're also adding in a new character called the witch's daughter who's a slightly younger version of the witches oh. and they've um, been transformed more into i've forgotten the word um heal, healing healers, women healing yeah. women the kind of rather than being witches necessarily oh, right. so they're sort of faith healers those sort of things and they've got you know they're going to be barefoot muddy feet um yes. sort of as most people presumably dress. were back then yes yeah, yeah. and yeah. it's a much 
yeah, we've kind of incorporated those sort of things into the play. Very interesting. And when you, when you say a young one, do you mean a little girl or do you mean a young woman? Oh, she's... She's 14, I think. 14, so, yeah, yeah but I think yeah. she's playing ever so slightly younger than... Has she got actually. lines? Have you given the lines or is she just there with, she, it, with the, the older witches? She does, she yeah. Does. I think she borrows from a few of the other oh, witches. Yeah, right. and she does a lot okay. of the singing. The witches are very musical. Ah, now the singing, yes, because I was looking through the, uh, the, the list of, you know, director and this, that, and that. Uh, you've got some uh, original music in this. Yes, we do. Um, so that's from our composer, George Jennings, who I've actually worked with before on a number of different projects. Yes. But he's... Fantastic. He's an amazing composer um, and just is going into Nell Gwynn again re- um, soon. He plays music in that as well and performing with that. Um, but he's written an original score, which is all in Gaelic yes. <laughs> and it's based on Gaelic prayers. So it's been very interesting to try and learn, hasn't it? Well, I don't know how you do that because, you know, it's a heck of a lot of lines to learn. But, you know, normally if you're learning lines in a play, um, you, you, you understand what you're saying and you know it's the bit where you have to say, I'm going out now, I'll see you later. You know, even if you don't get the words exactly right straight away, you can, you know, it's near enough. Yeah. But this is, are you learning this parrot fashion or do you, are you told what each of the lines means or how, how do you learn that sort of thing? It's, it's an interesting question, actually, because I was taught uh, back in school before I went to acting school um, that, you know, just, just say the line. It doesn't matter what it means at the moment, just say it. Mm. And, and that made me sort of hate Shakespeare, to be honest. And then I went to acting school and I was like, oh, I don't want to do it. And my teachers went, wait, wait, wait. Do you understand what they're saying? Then? Mm-hmm. I was like, well, largely no, not really. And then you take it word by word and you understand that actually when you do that, you can understand exactly what they're saying. Yes. It's just more eloquent. It's, it's got more floweriness to it. It's got yeah, more flourishes. life to it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And, and that's when you suddenly go, but, but well, that... why are they saying, why are they speaking like that? Instead of just going, I'm going to the shop. Why are they going, I will meet you betwixt the moon and the sun and the earth shall go around the corner and <laughs> yeah. then we'll have some fun at the shop. Like, there's a very long-winded way of getting there. Mm. And it, it's, I think it says something about the character's psyche, really. But, yeah, but, but we're talking about foreign language here. Yeah. So that, that's a, a world away from more flowery language, isn't it? You know, yes, are, you, yeah. are you just learning it phonetically, or are you being... With the songs, I, th- I with, think yes. largely I don't sing most of them because I'm either about to come on or I'm coming on. Or I think you're quite lucky there. Spoiler though. alert. Yeah. yeah, dead at the end. Um, no, you spoiled <laughs> it now. I said spoiler alert. <laughs> George, George has been really great, though, with the... With the music, he's yeah. um, in all of the rehearsals. He's been going through, and he, we are told what we are, what we're saying, or what we're singing about, about because it is, yeah, it is prayers. Yeah. So yeah. you kind of get a gist of what mm. they would be singing about. But very there's yeah, definite lines that you very, can understand. Very, very interesting. So he's also doing his take, bearing in mind we wouldn't know much about on what music might have been like. Then is he? Yes, as I, well as yeah. the costumes and. Yeah, ceremonies and everything so, yeah. else. Yeah, it's, it's a very nice sort of ethereal sounding Be- at times. It's really beautiful. Mm. Really is beautiful. If, if for any other reason, you should come and just to oh, hear you're, the music. You're selling it well, and so you should. <laughs> All right, hang on there. We'll have a song. We'll come back and talk a bit uh, more about uh, this new production of uh, Shakespeare's Macbeth, which is coming to uh, the. I'm assuming the Wild Theatre at South Hill Park. Yes. Yes. Yeah. South Hill Park's uh, Wild Theatre after Abba. Oh, I do love that glissando. BBC Radio Berkshire. BBC Radio Berkshire, ABBA and Dancing Queen. It's Bill Buckley with you until four. Uh, Brigitte Tetter is in tonight between four and six, ahead of sport in for Phil Kennedy. Uh, meanwhile, we're spe- speaking about Shakespeare and Macbeth, a uh, new production, a community production coming to South Hill Park. Uh, with me are Max Puplet and Laura Hanawin, who are playing Macbeth and Lady Macbeth. Um, what's the rehearsal schedule like for a community Production uh, d- different. I'm imagining from from f- full pro theatre. You can, people can't all take three weeks off and do it do it morning <laughs> do it morning till night, can they? They've got a living to make. Yes, yeah. Um, and normally with a community theatre, you are you do start months in advance, and it's very sporadic rehearsal. So you do two evenings a week, mm. and perhaps one day on the weekend, or that kind of thing. Um, sadly, with this one, we've had a much shorter rehearsal time. So it's How long? been. We started in December. Oh, yes. We? Well, yeah, so with, it, with just Sundays in December as well. Yeah. So three Sundays in December, I think we had. So actually, it's felt, ironically enough, much more like a professional um, yeah. rehearsal period because it has been so intensive. So we're juggling jobs and rehearsals and all different things at the moment. It's been very intense. My <laughs> word. Do, do you two, are you doing other projects at the same time then? Uh, not 
this month, no, no. I, I haven't had anything. There was last month I was doing some oh, other you're, you're a jobbing stuff. actress open for, for offers, though, aren't yes. you? Yes. Right, OK. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> if anyone's got any. Yes, do, do let us know. <laughs> and uh, what about you, Max? What, what are you balancing with uh, with this? Yeah, there's the same, really. I actually, I work at a school. Um, I, I sort of recently found out that actually acting, teaching is what I what I love doing. Yes. Um, so I sort of took the month off the school and... Because oh, I've got sixty percent right. of the lines of the entire show. Oh, I didn't realize it was that many. Yeah. It is that many. I, it, you know, Hamlet's probably got more out yeah. of his show, but, yeah. but you know, that's still a lot. What of a just res- me. Talking. What a responsibility. So I, I mean, hope people like my voice. Really. Yeah, I, I, hope, I really hope. <laughs> this is a good test. Yeah. <laughs> if you like Max's voice, come along. <laughs> and, and have you done this play before? I've never done Macbeth. No, no neither no, of no, you. No. no, I've never done it either. Gosh, that's that's very interesting. Let's talk a bit about you. Um, Max, I thought you might come with an American accent. I thought you might <laughs> be an American because you attended the New York Conservatory for Dramatic Arts. Yes, yeah. No, so I, actually, I come from Bracknell right. um, and then I went to college in Farnborough and then from there went to acting school in New York. And how did that come about? Have you heard of the, the sort of acting magazine called The Stage? Oh, yes. Yeah, so it's just Absolutely. randomly in the back of there. I saw an advert that said, do you want to study in New York? It's the tiniest, tiniest advert I've ever seen. Do you want to study in New York? And I was like, yeah, who would who would say no to that? Yeah. Uh, and so I applied and got in and then went. Right. It was very, very <laughs> random and not really thought out at all. Right. So, I mean, forgive my, you know, my nose. Was that, do you have to pay to do that? Or was that, yes. it wasn't like going to drama school over here where you might get a grant or a bursary? No, or, no. Yeah. So that was actually one oh, of the issues right. uh, is that because I was an international student, there were no banks in America that say, oh, we'll help you. No, I bet. So it was all, all And living off. in New York alone is an expensive yes. business plus, yeah, the, plus yeah, the fees. Yeah. So had you, had you been saving up hard before, hadn't you? Yeah, I actually took a year off just ah. before. So I found out I got in, took the year off, worked a lot, right. and then and then did as much as I could. And had you heard of the place? Did you know that it was... Because no point going to the other side of the world, however exciting that might be, if you're getting a, a third-rate training. Did you know it was a good place? Do you know, I, I hadn't heard of it until I had said, oh, I want to study there. Um, and then I auditioned, and then I eventually went out and saw the school. But Matthew Fox from Lo- uh, yeah, Lost went there. Ah, so that and was it, a big thing for me that they sold that a lot to me. Right. So if it was good enough <laughs> for him, it was that, yeah. good enough yeah. for you. Yeah, yeah. And and it did turn out indeed to be a good training. Didn't yes, it? Yeah, yeah, fantastic. And once that was done, you were then you put yourself on the job market and off you went. Yeah, came, well, it? they actually suggest that you take a year off. Oh. To me, they did anyway. Uh, take a year. <laughs> what were they trying You've to tell me? Just many years off. <laughs> Well, you should probably stop now. I think. Uh, I didn't We're listen. ganging up on him, Laura. We, we, we mustn't do this. Yeah, why, um, why, why was that then? I think it's just to get acting out of your head because a big thing for acting is life experience. Right. Yes, and you're asked yeah. to call on a lot of stuff. Yes. Um, and it's got to be safe. And, and you know, life experience is, a, is the best, really, teacher for, for an actor. Um, regardless if you go to an acting school, life experience can yes. teach you more than you, you would ever get from a school. Potentially. Very interesting. Did you, did you heed that advice then? I did indeed. I yes. don't know how you could. If I was just qualified as an actor, I'd be so bursting to, to go. I think <laughs> yeah. I'd, I'd say okay, and then as soon as I was out the door, I'd be you know look, looking well, through I, the jobs. I stayed in the same world, so I, I just worked backstage at first, and then oh, I switched onto right. the box office just to sort of find out that whole world and find out what was going on. Really, did you come straight back and do that over here? Or did yeah. All oh, yeah. right. So yeah. so it was good. Goodbye to New York after how long? Three years. After three years, yeah. how how did that feel? It was very odd because uh, Bracknell does not have many tall buildings. No, that's true. <laughs> and that's that was true. the the biggest thing for me was I was no longer in this wind tunnel of grids. Yeah, uh, just suddenly open areas. So does, does that suggest it was nice to come home, or did you miss it terribly? Because yeah, it was a bit odd. It was it was very nice, and miss I missed it a lot as well. Yes, because it's nice to just sort of walk around in a city and, and know that. There's people everywhere. Yeah, I, I think it's a fabulous city. Yeah, mm. it's been a few beautiful. times I've loved it. Yeah. Do you go back? I haven't yet. No, ah. no. It's very time to Have you kept in touch there. with people over there? Yeah, yeah. yeah. That's good because you, you're going to want a, a spare room, aren't you? Yes. Yeah. Although they, they're like hen's teeth, of course, in Manhattan, aren't they? <laughs> yes. Because yeah, people can barely time. afford one bedroom, let alone uh, several for guests. But ni- nice if you can go back and yeah. meet up with your mates and uh, they can show you around town yeah, and definitely. so forth. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, well, we'll hear um, what uh, your uh, the story's been so far, Laura, in a moment, and we'll talk a little bit more about the play as well. But... <laughs> BBC Radio Berkshire, Paul Simon, me and Julio down by the schoolyard, Bill Buckley in the studio with Max Puplett and Laura Hanawin, who play Lord and Lady Macbeth in a new community project at South Hill Park in Bracknell. And uh, we've heard how Max has ended up uh, here. What's uh, what's your story, Laura? I see your, your drama school, unlike the, the American uh, name of his... Uh, sounds like it might be in the East End, possibly East East 15. Is that where it was? Yes. Well, oh. it's actually, um, it used to be in the East End. It's moved to Essex now, okay. um, the actual. But they kept the 
yeah, name because the name, of, yeah. of the original postcode. Right. Um, yes, I trained at East 15. Right. Um, and then have come out and went on um, to tour uh, England with a theatre company that I worked with. And we had our West End debut last oh, year. Oh, bravo. Yeah, what was great. that? Um, it was one of our more well-known shows. It was called This Was the World When I Was King. Oh, right. um, so there, that was in the Arts Theatre in London. It was very exciting. Oh, uh, in Leicester Square? Yes, yeah. Oh, it's Leicester a Square. very nice theatre. Oh, it's beautiful. Really, really nice. Very, very good. And it's not the first community play at Bracknell for either of you, is it? What, what else no. have we done there? We've actually done two others this year, haven't <laughs> yeah. we, together? We did... You mean, you mean last year, presumably? Oh, yes, sorry, last yeah. year, yeah. So we that, did... That'd We're not be, that good. That would be a rush <laughs> to be learning Macbeth, you yeah. know, and within a few days to... Yeah, yeah to do the next bit, Two other yes. things. So what were the ones last year? Um, so we did Peter Pan together. That was the first time we worked together, wasn't yeah. it? Um, in the summer. Um, were you were you Wendy? I was Wendy. Yes. Were you Captain Hook? I was indeed Captain Hook. Uh, how did yeah. I know? <laughs> that was very what good great guess. casting. <laughs> um, so yes, and then the last show we did was in October half term, and it was um, the Magic Finger by Roald Dahl. It was the UK premiere oh, of wow. that. So yes. wow! Now, how, how did a community theatre get a world premiere on something by somebody that famous? <laughs> that's jolly good going. I believe that's that's to do with the the Dahl Foundation. Oh. I believe because I think someone in America have rights to do it professionally, but they don't have the rights to do it professionally here in England. Right. But they still wanted it to be performed, and so they said, "Here yes. you go, community." Yeah, it was to do wow. with the the writer David Wood. So Southwell Park did um, a production of I think it was James and the Giant Peach uh, a yeah, few yeah, years yeah. ago, yeah. and mm-hmm. David Wood, who wrote the adaptation, came and watched it, and they did such a the community they did such a fantastic job that he wrote specifically to South the Park mm. and said we want you to do well, it well what a feather in all your caps yeah. that, that is fantastic and, and what, what what or who were you each in that so I was Lucy <laughs> and she was the, the, young, the young heroine I was she? the young how, heroine how old were you playing probably about 11 okay. I think I was 11 years old I, how, how hard is that I mean you're you're, you're, you're still a young woman of course yeah but how, how do you reimagine yourself as an 11 year old what, what, what do 11 year olds do differently that we forget we do differently uh, I think it's just about remembering how to play and just finding the excitement of life yeah. and the the innocence, I suppose. But I, ironically enough, obviously, to go from that to then playing Lady Macbeth, mm. I've played mm. a lot more children than I have Lady Macbeth. She's a much more challenging role for me, actually. Yes, I see. Because so, you can transport the, the technique from one child, or they wouldn't do exactly the same, to, to another. Yes, yes, yeah. Right. And uh, meanwhile, what were you, Max? I, I was a, a duck that Lucy transformed into a human-sized duck. That then took over the house. But still a duck. <laughs> still, right. a still a duck. duck. Yeah, yeah. There was me asking uh, <laughs> asking Laura if it, if it was di- difficult to uh, reimagine yourself as a living. How, how do you do it with a duck? Do you know? I, I've actually just used the same techniques. No, I haven't. I, <laughs> um, yeah, it, it was uh, it was an interesting thought. I think actually. Yeah. What, what, what is a, what is a, a chunky six foot plus duck like then? How, how do you, what do you actually do? Uh, we, I think we went very militaristic with it, yeah. um, and, and so I was very much more of a military force when I was the duck that was like a no no nonsense, right. quacking well, it was quite everywhere. A, it was quite a sad story for you, though, yeah. because the reason I turned them into a giant ducks was the humans that had upset me had shot and killed oh, three of three their, children three of of their yeah. baby ducks. Wow. Um, and so it, the story is all kind of revolves around animal rights and how we I shouldn't see. kill for fun. That kind so you're of thing. thinking more about that than than being duck like, or were you? Yeah, well, or was that? Uh, you'd yeah. have to be duck like for a young audience, wouldn't you? you yeah, just, it's interesting. You could just be more... a tragic actor. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I couldn't, yeah. I couldn't take the time to <laughs> no, feel it. No, no, no it's, it's definitely more to what the kids would would want. So you can't go too scary and you can't go too nice with it because then the story doesn't carry over for them. Yeah. Um, so it's a pretty interesting a balancing process. act to do yeah, there, yes. Yeah. Um, well, you've got uh, nearly two weeks, haven't you, because you're on at the Wild Theatre. Yeah. Uh, Wednesday the 1st to Sunday the 5th of February at 7.30 and you've got a matinee on Thursday the 2nd. You'll, you'll be tired when you go to bed on the night of the the 2nd of February, having done Macbeth <laughs> twice, I would imagine. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Very, very yeah. tired. Yeah, because yeah. 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 it's a school as well, so there's a QA. and a in between the two oh my for us. lordy right so you don't even get free time much anyway no. it'll be almost the half by the time you've got rid of everybody and yeah. have a quick cup of tea won't it um, good luck anyway with it thank, thank you very, very, very nice very to much. meet you both and you, thanks thank for coming you. in thank you. BBC Radio Berkshire <laughs>